I want to welcome everybody to Keating Hall, home of Brockton Firefighters Local 144. At this time, I'd ask you to stand as we have the presentation of colors from Brockton Firefighters Pipes and Drums and Brockton Firefighters Honor Guard. You join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you remain standing for the retreat of the colors. So thank you everybody coming out today. I want to welcome everybody to the John P. Keating Hall. 
Homo Local 144. Uh, you know, it's only right to have friends and family of Local 144 here today to remember the 100 years that have been spent getting us to where we are today. Uh, we came, we lucked out with a nice day, and uh, unfortunately we have a good speaking program, hopefully for you, and uh, coming together, you know, recognizing this, I think, is a, a great thing. Um, with that, I, I just want to do a few uh, recognitions. I want to recognize uh, the family of um, uh, President Emeritus John P. Keating. Uh, they're here today. Uh, the family of um, former past president uh, William Wild Bill uh, Sheehan is here today. Uh, president Emeritus is uh, Billy Paolo, uh, Archie Gormley, uh, president, Vice President Emeritus Edward Mack, Vice President Emeritus Jimmy Young, and Emeritus Secretary Treasurer George Phillips. Uh, I also want to welcome, uh, we have with us today uh, from the IAFF, our International Association of Firefighters, our General Secretary Treasurer, uh, Edward A. Kelly, our third district vice president from the uh, IAFF, Jay Colbert, uh, from the PFFM, Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts, uh, President Rich McKinnon, Secretary Treasurer Billy uh, Cabral, DVP from District 1, James Brown, legislative agent Craig Hardy. Uh, I also want to recognize the president of the Plymouth Bristol Central Labor Council, Jimmy Pinkham, who uh, is here as well. Um, with that, um, as most of you know, we have a connection with the Scranton Firefighter Scranton Local 60 um, with our tie from the Strand, the anthracite that came up years ago. Um, and I want to welcome the members of uh, Scranton Local 60. Uh, also, I want to welcome uh, Chief uh, Mike Williams, retired Chief Ken Galligan and retired, retired Chief Francis. Um, all came up through the ranks and all were card carrying members of this local right up till, they, uh, till Chief. Uh, also want to uh, welcome Senator State, State Senator Mike Brady, uh, Mayor Bill Carpenter, uh, Councilors Jack Lally, Ann Beauregard, uh, John Buckley from the Register of Deeds, and Mark Lindy from the uh, Southeastern School Committee. If I missed anybody, I apologize. I'll buy you a beer later. Uh, also want to thank uh, Brockton Community Access uh, for coming out and uh, recording this today. You know, uh, we thought, we knew the 100 was coming up, um, obviously, and we started planning ahead. We knew we were gonna do something. We didn't know exactly what we were gonna do. Um, there was talk of doing a ball and, and having a you know big gala, and, but the, we wanted to use the hall here. Uh, we want to have it on our own turf. Uh, so we put it together. Um, and this is what we came up with. Uh, hopefully everybody will enjoy today. Uh, we also did some history. Uh, I gotta thank Bobby Myers. Um, in the program book, Bobby did the research um, on behalf of the local. I wanna thank him personally for his work. Um, and you know, we came up with some interesting stuff over the years. I, I'd have you here all day if we went through the whole 100 years, but I just wanted to key on some particular things that brought us to where we are today. Um, the Brockton Fire Department turned into a permanent department in uh, June in 1915. Uh, three years later, the International Association of Firefighters was formed uh, on February 28, 1918. And not long after, Local 144, November 25th, 1918, became affiliated with the International Association of Firefighters. Uh, you know, reading some of the stories, they ponied up to $10 for the affiliation fee. Um, and made the, uh, the jaunt down to D.C. to make sure that uh, they were part of this important uh, organization. So I'm sure GST Kelly will be happy that we've been paying since 1918. <laughs> Full per cap. Full per cap, you got it. Um, and we actually became, the, the official title was the City Firefighters Union Number 144, Brockton, Mass. That's what was our original. Um, we actually have on display in the hall a replica of our original charter. And fortunately, through 100 years, we still have the original charter that was signed by the original nine signers. Uh, Chester Bell, MJ Creedon, George Hanscom, John McAuliffe, Char Charles McCarthy, P. Clark McCarthy, James Murphy, Alfred Papineau, and Harry Wardall. So thank God for the vision that those guys had in getting involved with the international and starting what we have here today. Um, you know, over the last hundred years, you know, we've had many battles here at Local 144. Um, it seems like the battles that we've always had that started out a hundred years ago are almost similar to the ones that we have now. Um, 1920, for here in Brockton, uh, we finally went to a two platoon system. Uh, for those that don't know, that's two shifts. 
Um, and at the time, prior to that, uh, the firefighters were in the firehouse five days with one day off, and they didn't work an eight-hour day. So they were in there for a long time. Uh, they got politically active. They brought it to the voters. I mean, this is back in 1919 when they brought this up. Uh, so November 11th, 1919, they brought it to the voters, and they went to the two-platoon two system. And on a two-to-one margin, they won that vote, um, and they got that two-platoon system. Uh, the 1930s and 40s, uh, coming out of the Great Depression, was a tough time for everybody. Uh, there was a lot of cuts that they wanted to take from the fire department. Uh, and, you know, they, obviously they, they did their duty as, you know, good Americans, but some of the things they went a little too far. And way back then, in the 30s and 40s, we ended up taking our case to the Supreme Court in Massachusetts. Um, so, you know, we were, we were active way back then. Uh, and crazy enough, in 1945, uh, you know, reading through the, the annals of the uh, history, we got our hours down to a 70-hour work week, which, you know, just bananas if you think about it today. Uh, also in the 40s, in, um, everybody in the room, I'm sure here, totally understands, we had the tragedy of 1941. We lost 13 firefighters at the Strand Theater. We had 26 members that were severely injured, but many more with the PTSD that we recognize today that wasn't recognized the way it was back then. Um, and we started right off that, the year after, from Scranton, Pennsylvania, we, had, we started, remember, remember, every year with the anthracite that came up from uh, Scranton. Decades later, uh, the younger members of the, uh, of the local knew that we needed a more permanent memorial. Um, and that's when the local came together and we did our own fundraisers and we made it our mission to make sure that those 13 guys were properly remembered. And at City Hall now stands the memorial for the Strand Theater uh, tragedy. And uh, I gotta say so myself, I think the local did a great job getting that thing done. <laughs> Later in 1945, actually December 12th, 1945, uh, Local 144 became one of the 11 original charter members of the, at that time was called the Associated Firefighters of Massachusetts, now known as the Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts. And with that, uh, the president of the local, it became the President Wild Bill she Sheehan, actually was the first district vice president of District 1. So, which I never even knew that history till just recently, kind of crazy. And then Archie followed up after that. Um, <laughs> Two years later, yeah. <laughs> and actually, in one of the, the conventions that the, the uh, Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts had, August 17th, 1953 was held in Brockton. And actually was held right next door here where the walkover club used to be. This is, for those people that don't know, there used to be a lot of shoe factories out here. And the walkover was one of the shoe factories and they had, they had a hall over here. Um, they used to have balls and things like that. And uh, back in 1953, one of the conventions was actually held here in uh, Brockton, so maybe someday uh, we'll get that PFFM convention back here. I don't know. <laughs> I'm shooting big here. I'm shooting big. Those guys did back then, right? Uh, in the 50s, uh, the firefighters got involved, you know, with helping out the community. Um, you know, they started out with the March of Dimes, and the MDA came along, and still to this day, uh, the firefighters are one of the big the big givers, uh, the big proponents uh, advocating for muscular dystrophy. Um, you know, I got guys, they're still running all kinds of events. So to this day, we owe it to those guys that start that up, taking care of the kids in the wheelchairs and those that are uh, belabored with that disease. Uh, in the 70s, things were tough, as they always are. Uh, there was a cost of living raise that was supposed to go in for all the uh, members of the, uh, the city unions. And it didn't look like it was gonna get passed by the council. It barely got passed. Uh, and then uh, at that time, Mayor Crosby vetoed it. Uh, so Local 144 took it, took the lead, brought it to arbitration, and actually got it passed. And they got their raise in November of that year. Uh, 81 came proposition two and a half, limited the cities and towns from raising taxes. And this actually started a bad cascade in the city here of layoffs. Initially, it was layoffs through attrition. They weren't hiring guys after they were retiring. Manpower started going down. And then in 1991, we actually lost 31 members. They actually went out the door. 
uh, guys who were lieutenants, who were demoted, captains were demoted down. Uh, we went down to six companies. We had 19 firefighters on duty covering the city. At that time, the economics weren't that great. Buildings were burning. These guys, the guys that were left behind, were here doing the same work that they were doing with the, the whole full complement they had only years earlier. Sometimes some things never change. In 98, uh, we decided, we took a vote in here. We started talking about having our own place. Um, this local came together. Um, we all worked, found a place, took the vote, and we bought this place here today that you see now. Uh, for those newer people, when we originally bought this place, it was originally a, um, it was a garage for the factories to fix the salesmen's cars. Um, later on, it became the, uh, the hall where they taught uh, welders and uh, pipe cutters, pipe fitters uh, in here. When we got this place, it was a wreck. It was just a, a broken down garage. And with the, helps of, the help of our members and friends of ours, this is the hall that we own today, which I can say we paid off last December. We own this outright. Uh, 2005, we had members of the local wanted to have our own pipe band. I got together and, and they formed up what you see today. Um, you know, I, I, the whole local owes these guys a lot of gratitude and uh, debt. You know, these guys practice all the time. They're out there whenever, they, whenever they're needed, whatever the temperature is, whether it's zero or 100, those guys are out there. Um, so I want to thank them personally for all those guys do with the dedication. <laughs> That brings us up to our recent history. Um, you know, even in our recent history, we had some battles, getting contracts, um, and I think everybody in here knows what happened. If you don't, I'll buy you a drink in the bottle, I'll explain it to you, but at the end of the day, we did what needed to be done. Um, we worked with the city, we, got them, we all came together, and uh, we got the contract, and I think we got this respect that we were that we were requesting, that we were demanding to have. So, um, and I think that's still evident today. So uh, with that, um, you know, I personally, I just wanna say, you know, this local has a strong bond. I think, you know, when needed, the guys come out. Um, you know, we're here all the time. Um, and, you know, hopefully all of us in this room, you know, the, the phrase goes, leave it better than you found it. You know, that was just a brief history of the 100 years. And we always have to remember to respect what how we got to where we are today you know nothing was given to us you know i go into the drill school and i was told years ago you know the truck you see out here today if it wasn't for what we do we'd still be riding on that thing um you know what we advocate for for our members and protecting our families so um so thank you for taking the time listening to me um at this time i want to invite up the uh the mayor of brockton uh, mr bill carpenter uh, we've had a great relationship with him, and um, he's been, you know, he's been hiring guys for us. We work together. I call him, he answers the phone. Um, so at this time, I'd like to bring up the mayor, Bill Coppina. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and uh, first, I want to just say how much I appreciate the invitation to participate in this historic day of uh, Local 144 chatting with some of the union leaders earlier, I realized that it's only about 5% of firefighter locals are 100 years old or, or older. So this really is a historic uh, local with the great history that Bill just outlined. Um, I want to personally welcome some of the statewide union leaders, Eddie, Jay, Jim, the other statewide leaders that are here, my friend Jim Pinkham also. Uh, it's important uh, to us that you took the time to come to Brockton today. Uh, to be part of this ceremony. And uh, I'm also very gratified to see many of the retirees here. because I think as Bill alluded to, many of the benefits that today's firefighters of Local 144 enjoy um, were earned and paid for by your predecessors and it's great to have them here sharing in today's ceremony as well. Um, I appreciated the word that Bill used, the word respect. I guess mayors and firefighters unions have a rather unique relationship. Um, Archie was my guy for, for four years or so. I was shocked to find out earlier today that Archie has not actually retired. <laughs> I could have sworn he retired. He looks retired to me. Nonetheless, 
Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, I, I, I do think that <clears throat> our relationship over the past five years with, with the executive board and the members and, and the leaders of the union has been one of mutual respect. And I've earned a tremendous amount of respect in my five years for what the members of this local and this department do for the city every day. And uh, I think that, as, as Bill mentioned, I've had the relationship with both Archie and Bill that if there was a pressing issue that they needed to see me on, that they would get in the same day they asked. And, and we've kept that word, and my door is always open to your leadership. I can't always immediately accomplish what you would like me to, but I'm always willing to sit down and listen and understand and, and work together with you. And I think that through you know, a few tough budgets and some sometimes difficult contract negotiations, it's the relationship that allows us to ultimately get things done. Because I know at the end of the day, the members of the local uh, and I all want what's best for the Brockton Fire Department. We want what's best for the city of Brockton. And uh, we figure it out when we have to. So it's been, uh, it's been a distinct pleasure and honor for me to work with one, Local 144 for the past five years. And I'm looking forward to continuing our relationship. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, at this time, I'd like to bring up our state senator, Mike Brady. Uh, He's going to represent a state delegation. Unfortunately, uh, State Rep. Jerry Cassidy and Claire Cronin uh, had a family event today that they were unable to make it here today. They definitely send their best to us. Um, with that, I have to say, I, I believe, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but I think we have the best state delegation in the city, I mean, in the state, rather. Um, just as recently as only a month or two ago, um, for those that don't know, we have a 111F benefit, we call it. If we get hurt, the city will take care of us. They'll make sure that we're, our families are taken care of. And just over this last year, we've added cancer to that actual benefit. So with the rise of cancer in the fire industry, uh, now we're covered and our families don't have to worry about us catching cancer and, not be, and going off our health care. And with that, our state delegation was a big part of making sure that went through. So at this time, I'd like to bring up State Senator Mike Brady. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, and congratulations on your new ascension to the presidency of the Local 144. <laughs> I, uh, I, I go back a couple years to the young Mr. Bill Parlow who was out there, and then Archie, and of course, Bill. But um, I want to start off first by thanking the firefighters, not only in Brockton, but all across this country, the first responders, for what you do saving lives. I grew up on Pleasant Street, just less than a half a mile from Station 1, and I've seen what you've done firsthand from when my father had a couple of strokes and constantly saving lives out there day in and day out. And to Local 144, and I want to thank the PFFM and the International Association of Firefighters and Jimmy Pinkham as well for attending today, but the Local 144 sets the tone for many, many other unions out there because you set the tone to help not just wages and benefits, but public sa safety initiatives. And without the help of the Local 144 educating me and what needs to get done at the state level with the rest of our Brockton delegation and the rest of our senators and representatives, we wouldn't be able to do the job we do. So thank you for helping us do the job we do because you set the tone, as I mentioned, for many, many other unions. And for those listening, I'm preaching to the choir and the audience, but for those listening to at home that work in the private sector, Local 144 also sets the tone for the private industry because when you worked for us to help provide benefits for you and pass legislation to protect workers' rights and benefits and so forth, that also helps the private sector. So thank you for all the work you've done for us in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I'm also proud to be from the City of Champions because Squad A continues to have the number one cause in the country, never mind Massachusetts. And as I mentioned, I live right up the street from Station 1, so thank you for all your work. I uh, got a couple citations, one from the Senate. And if Bill, would you come up, please? This first one is from the State Senate. It's to congratulations to Brockton Firefighters Local 144. 
in recognition of your century-long dedication to protecting firefighters' interests, improving wages, hours, and working conditions for the brave men and women who serve the City of Champions. It's signed by the Senate President Karen Spelka, the Clerk William Walsh, and myself, Mike Brady. Congratulations. And also from our representatives who were very fortunate, we have a great team working together at the state level from the city of Brockton. This is the congratulations of Brockton Fire Local 144 and your 100th anniversary of your steadfast dedication to the safety of the citizens of Brockton. This is signed by the Speaker of the House, Robert DeLeo, Representative Jerry Cassie, Representative Michelle Dubois, and Representative Claire Cronin. And may you have many hundreds of more good years, and uh, anything we can be of help for, with at the state level, you know how to reach me. God bless you. I'd also like to mention uh, State Rep. Uh, Michelle Dubois was unable to attend, but sends her regards. Um, unfortunately, she wasn't able to be here, as well as, uh, is she out there? Oh. Well, I guess she's here now. Thank you for coming. Uh, she was probably out door knocking. Uh, there she is. Uh, also, uh, uh, Councilor Ward 1, uh, Tim Cruz, sends his regards. Uh, he was unfortunately unable to make it. And I know Susan DeCastro, uh, I saw her, a city council was here. Uh, Councilor at Large, Bob Sullivan, is here. And any other, but anybody else before I rip this through? All right. So with that, at this time, I'd like to introduce um, our International District 3 Vice President, uh, Jay Colbert. Jay's a lieutenant with the Somerville Fire Department. Uh, he was uh, the president of Somerville Locals, Local 76. As well, he served as the uh, District DVP in the Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts, a legislative agent position, and the Secretary Treasurer of the Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts. And in 2016, he. Uh, took over for the great Mike Mullane um, and, and is now the International District 3 Vice President. So I'd like to bring up Jay Colbert. Thank you, Billy. And it truly is an honor to be here celebrating 100 years of Local 144. Mayor Carpenter, when I heard you speaking earlier, I was thinking, you know, only in the public union realm will you be able to have what is essentially our boss here celebrating 100 years of union activity? You know, it's kind of like dogs going over to celebrate with cats. But uh, no, uh, our general secretary treasurer will follow me up here and he'll give a little uh, speech on the 100 years of the International Association of Firefighters. But I'd just like to remark on what were the firefighters of Local 144, what are they getting out of their local now? And what they're getting from Local 144 is a great advocacy. Advocacy to attain a, a livable wage. Advocacy to make their work conditions and their uh, equipment safer. Advocacy for a good health care plan that will enable them to take care of their spouses and their children. And advocacy for a good benefit, a retired benefit, defined benefit pension plan that'll make them able to live a dignified, retired life. But they'd also be getting a great advocate, <clears throat> excuse me, for the community. The Local 144, as you heard Billy say, does a lot of things in the community. They rent this hall out to different members of the community. They, uh, they MDA, they sponsor Little League teams, Babe Ruth teams, midget football. They are very, very integrated in the community down here. They're great neighbors. The great civilians, the great civic citizens. So what you're getting in the city of Brockton with these local 144 is a pretty good product. They're also advocates during tough times, and we know Brockton's had some tough times, layoffs, station closures. I remember the 91 fight. I know Archie, who I see here, was laid off during 91. 
And uh, Billy Paolo, I know Billy was engaged back then. I don't know if he was the president in 91, but they had some, some ruckus times back here in the 90s. One of the bigger advocates, one of the bigger things they advocate for, though, is the retirees. And I see a bunch of the retirees here, and that's great to see them come back. What they did two years ago to remember guys who were on this job who made the ultimate sacrifice up by City Hall, building that tremendous monument, can't be understated. You know, time goes on, people forget, but 75 years later, this city and this union came together and built what is maybe the best single monument in the state of Massachusetts, other than our PFFM one up the State House. <laughs> A little same personal pat. Yeah, same sculptor. <laughs> also, big advocacy that, that, that the uh, local 144 promotes is uh, the, uh, the city of Brockton. Uh, I'm losing my train of thought. You got me off on that thing. Huh? No, no, not the fair. The fair. That fair's gone. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, actually, I, I know what it meant to say. I, I heard this, the mayor, he took me off my train of thought. I saw Jimmy Pinkham and Mark Flaherty from the Central Labor Council. They do advocate for the other unions around town and around the district. A lot of times, in unions, you do not have the buy-in with the members to get involved politically. These guys down here, it's in their DNA, and I know Paulo beat it into them, and Archie was a legislative agent up the State House. They did some tremendous things in the labor movement, helping out other people. They're advocates up on Beacon Hill. They're advocates on Capitol Hill. They've been doing a yeoman's work for over 100 years, and it's still doing it. These members here today should feel compelled to keep up with what you have as a precedent setting local with the guys that have led this local for the past 100 years. <clears throat> Going forward, this local is going to have some challenges. Older cities often do have some challenges. But you know what? It's going to be uh, it's going to be the relationships that they've built over the past 100 years that get them going forward. Brockton's a tough town. They're known for having uh, the city of champions because of heavyweight champion Marciano and uh, middleweight champion Hagler. All those Super Bowl championships they won over at the high school. You also should be proud. The city of champions has a heavyweight champion uh, local union, 144, and I want to congratulate you on 100 years of existence. It's now my distinct honor to bring up our next guest, who is not only a close friend, he's more like a brother to me. He, Edward A. Kelly got elected to the International Association uh, General Secretary Treasurer two years ago this past August. He's probably the most innovative, idealistic young labor leader in the country. The infusion of energy that Eddie has brought down to our international in Washington, D.C., has been amazing to watch. I have a front row seat to see it. I've never ever stopped being impressed by the instincts this young man has. He's been a great labor leader since the age of 30 when he took over the local 718 Boston Fire through the professional firefighters of Massachusetts, president, and now down in DC. It's a distinct pleasure to bring up my friend, Eddie Kelly. Good afternoon, everybody. It is a great honor to be down here in Brockton. And Mayor Carpenter, thank you for your friendship and partnership with the firefighters here in Brockton. And Senator Brady, my dear friend, you do a tremendous job representing your district up at the State House. I had the opportunity to work with you as a rep and now as a senator. And this district is very well served at your hands as a senator. And I know um, Councilor. Uh, Jack is here, and uh, it's great to see you for being here representing the City Council. Um, what a great honor it is to be here. I bring uh, the blessings of our General President, Harold Schaeberger, and 314,000 firefighters throughout the United States and Canada to bring you Godspeed and blessings on the 100th anniversary of this great union. The IFF was formed 100 years ago on February 28, 1918. It doesn't escape me that 
nine, year, nine months later, the birth of Local 144 took place. Many, many times, this local was considered to be a bastard child. <laughs> but it was through our fighting that we got to where we are today. If you think about how it started 100 years ago, how those firefighters met right here in this city, I'm sure November 25th was the day they went down to DC, but on September 22nd, 1918, I bet you there was a lot of haggling in the firehouses. I bet you there was a lot of pressure on those leaders to not affiliate with the union officially, not become part of the AFL, not to be recognized as part of the labor movement, to stay a loose association, to not have the strength and clout and capability that comes with being part of a greater movement, of being part of the labor movement. Just 10 years after we were formed, firefighters' salaries throughout the U.S. and Canada doubled. 25 years later, we were making 80% more than when we started. When you think about the challenges of firefighters, the risk to our safety day in and day out when a box comes in, the sacrifices that we make that the firefighters in Brockton have made, the 13 at the Strand Theater and so many more, the health and safety challenges that we face. It's this union, it's Local 144 that fights at the local level, it's the PFFM that fights at the state level, and it's the IFF that collectively brings the might to the doorstep of decision makers. And we've come a long way, whether it's the public safety officer benefit, that when we get killed in the line of duty, our family gets a benefit from the federal government and the state government. Whether it's the presumptive legislation so that we suffer from heart disease, lung disease, or cancers, that our families aren't bankrupted as we lose our income to fight our cancers and our diseases. We've come a long, long way. And it wasn't given to us. And when you think about, when I think about Brockton Firefighters Local 144, I go back to 1999 when I was first elected to a position within the IFF. I was a delegate from Boston Local 718 to the PFFM convention down the Cape. And uh, back then, uh, I watched a guy march up to the microphone in front of 800 delegates with a pitchfork. His name is Billy Paolo. And he stood up and said, Paolo Brock, they're 144. And I knew right away, that's leadership. And him and Eddie Mack ran this local as I was a kid coming up. And I watched their fights. I watched them stand up to adversity, never blink in the eye of a challenge whether it was uh, blowing up rats, <laughs> providing lunch for the less fortunate. <laughs> what they proved, what I learned from them, I've been able to take with me on my journey. And what I think people underestimate us and the fact that they don't recognize the love that we have for each other and what we do. See, 100 years ago, when the Brockton firefighters got together and said, we deserve to be treated better, and we're willing to stand up to make it happen, to make sure that we can actually go home once in a while, not work seven days a week, which is what they did. Make sure that when we die, we're not buried in a pauper's grave, which they were. 
make sure that we can provide a little something, a little economic ladder for our children to climb. What I think people don't recognize is our willingness to sacrifice for others is only surpassed by our willingness to sacrifice for each other. And that's what the IFF is. That's what Local 144 is all about. You know, the same pressures that pushed the Brockton firefighters together 100 years ago exist today. And they'll exist 100 years from now. And someday, because of the leadership of people like Billy Hill and Archie Gormley, who I got to serve with on the PFFM board, will pass on to the next generation of firefighters the same love, the same passion, the same willingness to sacrifice and fight for each other that those forefathers did 100 years ago and Billy Paolo taught me. And you know what? 100 years from now, they'll be celebrating their 200th anniversary here. And they'll be talking about guys like you guys, like Jimmy Young, like Billy Hill. And you know what? We will outlive everybody because righteousness is a powerful motivator. Happy 100th. God bless and good luck in the next 100. And that's why he's a GST, <laughs> hands down. Today we're going to unveil a rendering of a bronze plaque that will be erected right here in the coming month to celebrate our last hundred years and for future generations to view and understand the history of Local 144. At this time, I'd like to invite the families of John P. Keating, William Wild Bill Sheehan, the President Emeritus's Vice President Emeritus's and Secretary Treasurer Emeritus of Local 144, our GST and our District Vice President for the unveiling. Following the ceremony, please join us for refreshments and I'd like to, at this time, ask everyone to stand. Jack, grab this and unveil it. 